I used to own an aluminium scaffolding tower. It was about four foot by four, went up about 20 feet up in the air, and I used to use it for photographing things like great spotted woodpeckers at the nest high up in the trees or nut hatches, or even songbirds when they're on top of a hedge and I wanted to be level with them rather than looking up. So I owned it for 30 odd years, it was very very useful and um, a bit precarious. I haven't got a great head for heights and when you're sitting in a hide on top of this tall platform you did feel a bit wary at times. And then one day something awful happened. I got old and the thought of carrying that scaffolding from the nearest vehicle access point to where I'm going to photograph, which might be 50 metres, might be 300 metres, just became a bit too much. It would take about 20 journeys, each section of the scaffolding got to be carried, then the four planks that went on the top of it, then the hide, then all the ropes that you used to use to lash it to nearby trees so it didn't fall over. It was a lot of work and when you're young and keen that's okay you do it but I'm no longer young and the thought of carrying that scaffolding about has just become say too much for me so about two years ago I sold it so now I have to use a more high-tech or old wrinkly's version of getting up in the air and this is it a telescopic aluminium pole I bought this off eBay a couple of years ago Similar things are available for photography. They're like a mast and state agents would use them to get pictures of their buildings they were trying to sell and landscape photographers too. And they'd come on a, either a freestanding stand or they would attach to the tow bar of your car. That was very useful, it gave you a very solid base. I'd imagine they don't get used much today because they'd be doing similar stuff but with drones now. Anyway, this isn't one of those. This is just an aluminium telescopic pole. I believe they're sold as aerials. And it wasn't that expensive. And it goes up to about the same height as my scaffolding tower. So the only problem you have is how to operate the camera on the top. So to operate the camera up in the air, I'm gonna use two devices. First of all, there's an electronic tripod head made by Haig. And secondly, there's a bit of kit called a cam ranger, which is little more than that really. And it turns this electronic tripod head into a wireless tripod head. You can use it with a cable. You can buy a very long cable for it, but it's much easier, especially up in the air, to use it wirelessly. And this will pan and tilt, so I can change the angle of the camera completely. It works with Sony cameras, Nikon, Fuji and Canon. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with my new Olympus gear. Um, so I have to have a Canon camera attached to it. So I've kept one camera back, uh, an EOS 70D. No lenses for it. Doesn't need to do anything, this camera. It just has to be in the circuit. So it's connected to the device and that allows me to then control the tripod head. The Olympus camera, I have to control with an app on another mobile phone. Um, with using their app and that allows me to change all the basic settings the ISO the shutter speeds the f-stop the focusing points I can see the picture I'm taking and I can review the pictures as well so I've got two mobile phones on the go one has the cam ranger app on which allows me to wirelessly control this head and the other is controlling the Olympus So I'll just fit a camera on top of that so you can see that it's actually working. I used to use this with the Canon 800mm lens, which was a massive lens and really beyond the, the weight limit of the head. But it's much easier today with the Micro Four Third Olympus gear. Now I can lift the telescopic pole as high as I like. I can go right up in the air, 20 odd feet. And then using one mobile phone, I can control the tripod head, so I can pan to the left and pan to the right, and also I can dip it down. So that's it. If there was a great spotted woodpecker's nest here, I would put a hide up as close to the 
pole as possible because we all know what Wi-Fi is like it comes and goes a little bit in your house you'll know it's, you get a stronger signal in some rooms than others and it's not always that logical so the closer I am to the Wi-Fi device which is up that pole the better I get a stronger signal and more likely to have a, a stable connection but there is no woodpecker's nest here but I'm going to show you one I filmed earlier using this device uh, and away from here Now the reason I actually couldn't do this in situ is it wouldn't be fair on the woodpecker if it's actually feeding young on the nest I don't want to be here filming this footage this takes me about an hour to do it I very rarely get my lines right the first time I normally have to shoot everything four or five times before I start to get it right um, and sometimes you finish and you realize you forgot to comb your hair before you started so you have to begin all over again so I'm doing it here where I'm actually not too far from the car but uh, this is the new way of getting up in the air the best time to photograph great spotted woodpeckers at the nest is when the young are old enough to be coming to the edge of the hole. On this occasion it's only the male that's coming in, the female is around but she's just having a rest. And the male comes in every two or three minutes. This is one of the stills pictures I took on that day. I've always enjoyed photographing juvenile great spotted woodpeckers. Once they fledge, they have this lovely red cap which makes them look cuter than the adults, I feel. So sometimes during the summer months, I keep a, a winter feeding station going right throughout the year so that when they do fledge, the parents bring them into that feeding station. They only feed them for the first few days and then they try to drive them away. So here we have a juvenile on the right and the adult is behind the post. And the juvenile is begging to be fed. finally gets his way but not for very long this is just a couple of hours later and the female is far more aggressive towards her youngster The siblings can be very aggressive towards each other as well. And that's it. Thanks for watching.